Hello and welcome back to Core Finance. I'm Matt Brown. I'm joined by Gaurav Sharma, who is a business editor at the IB Times. It's been a little while, Gaurav. Thank you very much for joining us here on Core Finance. OPEC week, right here Indeed, we are. Indeed, uh, a crude oil week ahead of us. Uh, it's looking rather bullish, over the, mm -hmm. the, you know, given the scheme of things. Will they, won't they? I think, uh, I think they will. Mm -hmm. They will extend their uh, rollover of 1.8 million barrels per day, bought in concert with the Russians, and I think that is what is driving uh, much of the market sentiments. Uh, never say it's a done deal, but like, let's say, you know, on the balance of probability, looks like it's not, and there's a 90% chance that OPEC would do it. And I think there are two reasons. One, that it's, it's, it's going all right, so they'll, they'll rather keep this bullish trend going. And the second is, which is the more important one, we'll come to that later, is the absence, complete absence, of an exit strategy. Mm -hmm. All right, so, so what we have here is on, on the 30th of November, and by the way, the forecast is for heavy snowfall in Vienna on the 30th of November. I shall report back to you. <laughs> but it, I think it will make the Russians feel at home. They'll be in town, so will another nine non-OPEC producers. And I think the, the vibes that we're getting is, is that the cut would be rolled over. And that is sort of reflected in the price. We, uh, as, as you may recollect, last week we touched uh, two-year highs. So mm -hmm. Brent is uh, 63 or thereabouts, and the West Texas, because of an out, a pipeline outage, is doing about 58. Uh, I think if uh, spread bettors are watching this broadcast, or even if the, the serious punter in the, in the futures market, I, I would suggest uh, trade on the daily news, and I think this looks to be uh, a fairly bullish week. And um, it, it does feel now, you know, certainly, certainly if the Russians are playing ball, that actually OPEC, there seems to be uh, a bit of harmony Within uh, within OPEC and even the major non-OPEC members is, will that continue, uh, or could we see maybe a shock or two down the line? And if there is a shock, where's it going to come from? Well, I'll, I'll attach a couple of uh, uh, caveats there. It's 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 a policy making harmony. Let's put mm -hmm. it that way. Uh, or informal policy making harmony because after all Qatar is the subject to a diplomatic spat mm -hmm. the Saudis and Iranians are uh, engaged in a proxy war but I think in the corridors of, uh, of OPEC it's all very smooth and I think this brings us back to our point of, of an exit strategy now it's all well and good that you you know the current cut is in place until March it is expected to be rolled over by another six, six to twelve months if that is the case well you've kicked the can uh, you know down the line now how will this current situation be broken? Will OPEC decide finally that they've cut enough and they'll start pumping more, in which case additional barrels will come up? Mm -hmm. Or would somebody just break protocol? Uh, for instance, some of the smaller members like Ecuador, who are you know, sort of small contributors to the OPEC headline quota, are already not partaking in this cut. Uh, and a lot of people think that, that Iraq is also sanctioned, bus uh, not sanctioned busting, I beg your pardon, mm -hmm. uh, uh, quota busting. So. You take all of that on an even keel, would, would somebody just break ranks, one of the big big players break ranks, or would OPEC simply decide that it's cut enough, in which case this begs the question, will it return to the previous level of 33 uh, million barrels per day? If that is the case, there's more oil in the market. Now, in tandem with the, the sort of relatively 60 plus Brent price that we've seen, mm -hmm. you've gradually noticed, I mean, if it's US Thanksgiving holiday uh, this weekend, so, so volumes were a little bit low. But it's that time when Baker Hughes publishes its rig count data a lot earlier than it does uh, late on a Friday evening our time. And I think if you look at the, the figures, and I'm, I'm going to be a little old-fashioned here, bring a pen and paper. <laughs> school, my yeah. yeah, my terminal has failed me this morning. But nonetheless, so U.S. rigs, about 923 rigs in play, about eight more than last week. Canadian rigs up seven more, 215 in play, and international rigs are always up. So you take all of that, so the rig count is again rising. So the market responds. Now, how, how do shale players re respond to a higher price? They'll pump more. So they're already maintaining their levels, and the U.S. is expected to sort of produce around 10 million barrels a day. What then happens when then OPEC re reverts back to the norm, or its old norm? So that leads me to believe that the market fundamentals will, uh, the way I view 2018, they haven't materially altered. I stick by my, uh, by my theory that even, even if the oil price touches 70 come Christmas, which it probably won't, or it might, you never know. It, the, the issue here is that the average price will still be in this, in this old 55 to 65 range. And next year, I, I don't see a dramatic breakaway from there. There will be no dramatic overshoot because the demand centers are what they are. And if the price stays with, uh, where it is, we will get more non-OPEC oil. The question is, will OPEC put more in? Mm -hmm. And um, you, you mentioned the, the bullishness this week. 
obviously surrounding OPEC. Um, as we've seen with certain kind of Fed announcements and other announcements come out, say from the Bank of England, where the markets have moved, and then the news comes out, and the asset prices drift back down. It's, it's people kind of waiting for that exactly. news. Exactly. When, as and when it happens, we, we, the prices move down. Do you, do you think there will be a similar case with OPEC? I, I totally agree with you. I, I'm mm -hmm. glad you bring this point up. You, you, you look at who, who is buying into this rally. Mm -hmm. Who is buying into and, and you will find that a lot of money managers have just sort of jumped in, thinking, let's just see if this rally lasts. And they're, they're, they're bent on making money whichever way, way it goes. But they're going long at mm -hmm. the moment. Based on the daily news flow, Will it be sustained? That, that, that's the old question. I, I, I don't think so because the, as soon as the oil price starts touching sort of 60, 70 or thereabouts, you will see, you will invariably see more oil come onto the market. Mm -hmm. And there are new funds in Mexico, the, the Colombia is pumping more. There are other production supply centers, production supply centers that this whole rally seems to ignore. So if the fundamentals have not materially altered, and the money managers drive rally, that rally is likely to be very, you know, it's not, it, it'll be short-lived, mm -hmm. let's put it that way. Speculative. Well, we look forward to, uh, obviously, the OPEC updates later in the week. You're going to be out there in Vienna enjoying it, um, and we look forward to catching up with you and getting uh, your view and take on uh, how the whole OPEC meeting goes. But in the meantime, Graf Sharma, thank you very much for joining us. Good to be here. Thank you.